Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Well, today we are finally ready uh, that it will tell you what actually a variety is. We're talking about varieties all the time, but what I really mean is abstract varieties, while whatever what I was talking before were kind of the affine varieties. And it's completely fine to kind of identify the both, uh, the, 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 these guys, up to there will be projective varieties. So affine and projective are kind of slightly different things. One of them is nicely compact, the other one is not. Um, and then there are some varieties that are neither, and I don't care about them a lot, at least, in this video. So for this video, it's completely okay, because I haven't talked about projective varieties yet, to just keep affine varieties in mind. And it's really this idea of zeros once more, I uh, will remind you what uh, prairie varieties are, and abstract varieties are prairie varieties plus one condition, which I will kind of explain, uh, try to motivate where it really comes from, uh, the one extra condition. But let me go back to what we have seen. Well, if you, prairie variety was like a manifold, it was glued together from, from patches. And well, if you study manifolds, then what you will see very, very quickly is something I usually tend to ignore all the time is, well, the definition of being glued together from patches is almost perfect. There's the good examples that everyone likes, like the sphere. Huh? So here's my favorite example of all. The sphere, our blue marble, um, the, the sphere. That's a good manifold. Everyone likes the sphere. Um, I hope you like the sphere because everyone likes the sphere. Uh, so if I claim that everyone likes the sphere and you don't like the sphere, then, then, then we have a problem here, obviously. But anyway, um, that's a good example. And then we had this example where you just glue together two lines, except at one point, which is this um, space with, with two origins, if you want. And this is like a really terrible example. Nobody likes that example. Um, probably someone will. But if I can say nobody, nobody will. Okay, fine. And the hope is, and why is that bad? Because some of the idea of studying manifolds is that there should be nice spaces which are still rich enough to be kind of interesting. You can try to classify them. You could try to do analysis on them or something like that. And if you allow such pathologies, then, then it just gets really bad. So the problem here is a little bit like many folds in one dimension should be essentially trivial. There should be essentially only two of them. Like there should be this manifold, which is called the line, and there should be this manifold, which is called the circle. And that's about it. And so this is one dimension, in dimension one. In dimension two, you get a nice classification. In dimension three, it gets more difficult. In dimension four, it gets more uh, very, very difficult. But anyway, so that's roughly what it should be. And if you allow those pathologies, um, then it's kind of bad because already in dimension one, it gets pretty insane. And then in dimension two, who knows? And in dimension three, who knows? And that's, that's somewhat not good because manifolds, at least that's what how most people think about them, should be the nice spaces. So we kind of want to kick out, we don't want them. We are we're very non-inclusive here and we kick them out, the pathologies. We don't like them. So we, we don't like this bad example. And the usual way how to do that is to add an extra assumption to the definition of a manifold. And algebraic geometry mimics topology. And then we have to have the notion of a prey variety and we will add an extra assumption to kick out kind of strange spaces like we really don't like this one here. We, we really don't like that. Kind of a strange example. And the way you usually do it in topology is this assumption, the correct definition of a manifold, if you want. Um, to add this Hausdorff condition. And Hausdorff really means you can separate points, right? You can draw uh, a little disk around one point and a little disk around the other point and the two disks are disjoint. This Hausdorff property. And you just can't do that here. You draw a little disk around zero, it will always contain some points uh, down here in the same form, or maybe you want to call it zero prime if you want. So you can't separate those two points. It's not a Hausdorff space. So if you add this condition on being Hausdorff, then yes, the sphere is obviously Hausdorff. I mean, you can obviously, not so difficult to separate two points on a sphere. You can do that. Um, uh, but the, the bad space is not Hausdorff. And it turns out that this is a good definition. So you essentially only need to add this Hausdorff assumption to, uh, to the definition of manifolds, and we are good to go. We kind of have the nice spaces that remain. Uh, strictly speaking, there's another assumption which usually is called second countable, um, which makes which kind of makes the spaces not too large if you add that assumption. 
But let's ignore that. That's some set theoretical nonsense. I ignore it. Uh, think about Hausdorff. Hausdorff is this extra property that makes um, many for the definition of manifold contain mostly the nice spaces, which is kind of uh, really, really good. Okay, so Hausdorff is the extra condition we need to add. Manifold patchworks, but not quite, because we have this funny example, so add another assumption, and yeah, Hausdorff is what you need to do. There's then one problem in algebraic geometry, because in algebraic geometry we mimic topology, right? So we would like to add the condition of Hausdorff to our, our definition of a prior variety, and that should be a variety. The problem is our little friend the Zariski topology, which I say it again, is a correct thing to do in algebraic geometry, just as a topology, it's just really shit. In particular, because the open sets are just ridiculously large, remember, the open sets are essentially everything, um, there's no way that those spaces are Hausdorff, they're essentially never Hausdorff. So this kind of the wrong condition because if you add it, then nothing would be a variety, and that's 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 kind of bad. <laughs> and our study of varieties is a kind of a bit empty. And the main observation, which is not difficult to understand, but kind of probably quite difficult to come up with, um, is the following. So there is instead of imposing Hausdorff itself, we impose an equivalent condition on Hausdorff. So there's this funny idea or this standard idea in topology that the space is Hausdorff if and only if the diagonal, those x comma x in the product, is a closed space. And it turns out that this definition, the not the Hausdorff one, Hausdorff is bad with Zariski topology, as I said, but the other definition is essentially what it is it not essentially, it's exactly what you need to do to mimic Hausdorff in algebraic geometry. Right? So Hausdorff in algebraic geometry should be this funny condition here, which as I said it comes a little bit unmotivated if I just throw it at you, but if I say it's equivalent to Hausdorff, at least it seems to work uh, for me. And you just can't do Hausdorff because it's a risky topology, too bad. Okay, prior variety, the patchwork thing, and the variety is a prior variety such that the diagonal is closed. Period. And you can check that the, all the nice affine varieties that we like, there are varieties, but this funny space here is not. And that's kind of uh, the whole point. Of this definition very very similar to the definition of a manifold you add this Hausdorff condition to get rid of kind of strange spaces okay the only slight technical catch here is that the product is not not quite what you think it is if you're thinking in terms of topology because we are algebraic geometers our topology the Zariski topology is too bad and on the product space we don't have the product topology the Zariski topology doesn't behave nicely with respect to the product topology. Instead, we have, well, the following definition. Yeah, there are many ways to say that. So maybe the one most of you will like most is uh, the defined by universal property. So it is the product in the sense of categories. Um, the way how I like to do it is the following. You just take for affine varieties, it works as follows. So you have two affine varieties uh, and the product is then just the variety in this space, and then you just impose the, the risky topology on the product and not the product topology. Be careful. So again, the risky kind of really badly behaved with respect to topologies. You need to impose the risky topology, not the product topology. The even better way of saying that is, is this correspondence to algebra. And in algebra, the product should be the tensor product of spaces. Um, here's a nice example of what that is. So if, if V is K and W is K, then there are coordinate rings are just polynomial rings. So the coordinate ring of V cross W should be just a polynomial ring in two variables. And yeah, so if you just mimic that, if you just impose that and then pull it back over the equivalence, you would get this definition of you just put the what well, the universal product definition, the universal property definition, you just put the Zariski topology um, on the product. But anyway, this was just a little bit of a technicality. The point is, the takeaway is, varieties really simply mimic manifolds. They're patchworks together with the Hausdorff condition. And yeah, and they have a lot of compact examples, which we're going to see in future videos. So essentially in the next two or three videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.